Hi guys, welcome back. So in today's video, this is a 25 litre tank. I'm going to set it up as a Wallstead Aquarium. I, uh, I've got to run the lights. I've got a few hard water marks on the tank. It's uh, I've just washed it all out and stuff. The fish that were in here, I've put me a uh, high tech tank. So I thought, since I'm banging on so much about the Wallstead method, I could at least set up a Wallstead method tank rather than be a uh, <coughs> bit of a hypocrite talking about it and not doing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some organic topsoil, about an inch, up to my first bit of my finger, and then add like an inch of gravel. So I'm still undecided, even though I'm making the video, whether I wanted to use pea gravel, or I've got like a nice 3 mil, like Hugo Kamishi black. I'm tempted to go with that, but I want the natural look of a uh, pea gravel. I like the look of that, but I'm not going to add any... I might put a few twigs in, I'm not sure. I, I still haven't decided which way I'm going to go, but I don't want rocks and stuff breaking up the soil. I want the whole bottom of the tank to be soil. And usually what I'll do, if you watch my wall star videos, I'll run like the gravel around the perimeter so you can't see the soil. But what I'd like to do in this video is leave the soil on the tank so you can see it, because it's not so much a display. It's kind of a display tank, but it's in a spare room, so... It's not going to be seen by anyone, so I can leave it and see if we can uh, see some plant growth. I, to me, it's it's interesting. I've, I haven't had a Wallstad tank before for, well, I don't know, about seven, eight years where I haven't been able to see the soil because I always hide it because people complain about the look of it. But if you're running it for the sake of wanting to run a Wallstad method tank, then it's interesting to see what goes on in the substrate, isn't it, really, if we think about it. But anyway... Let's get some organic topsoil in there. So there you go, as you can see, we've got our, uh, our soil substrate in now, time to get some uh, cap in. Right, so let's get the gravel in. I've chose the pea gravel now, if you remember, I used the, this exact bag in what I call my pre-wallstad tank. And it didn't half cloudy the water, and I haven't rinsed it. So, <laughs> I'm just going to go with it, I'm going to fill it up. And then, I'll just try and keep the agitation low in it. It's going to be very inconvenient for me to wash it. Yeah. So there you go, I've turned off the light, so we've got an inch of soil, and we've got an inch of cap, it's a bit uneven, but you always get this because of the weight of it, it pushes down into the gaps and stuff, but as long as it's roughly, you know, nature isn't perfect as it is, so, but, so let's talk about what we're going, what's going on here, so, we've got the soil here, and then we've got the cap, and obviously I'm going to plant into the cap, and what happens is when the when the fish waste comes down, it slowly works its way down in here and this soil is full of beneficial bacteria, the same beneficial bacteria as what people run in the filters. Obviously that's what we want to promote, to promote the waste in a system. 
But with the wall start method, what happens is in this, we oxygenated water comes down and you've got all the nutrients in here. The, the bacteria break it down and they release it into nitrate, nitrite, all the good stuff. But the plants absorb all that. Um, and that's the whole premise of the wall start method is the waste comes in with oxygen and the bacteria in the soil process it, turn it into mold and it releases all the nutrients that the plants need plus CO2 and that's basically it, it's that cycle of the waste coming in being broken down by the bacteria in the highly anaerobic area of the soil somewhere in here it'll be, you know, it's not exact but the roots will come down it'll take all the micronutrients out of here and it'll use all the macronutrients out of the fish waste and that perpetual cycle is the engine that runs the wall stab method so the challenges we face with the wall stab method is if this cap stops the oxygen and the nutrients coming down to these bacteria in here instead of aerobic respiration where they're releasing nitrates then they'll swap over to denitrification the bacteria and they'll start breaking this down into gases and stuff that the plants won't utilize and then this is what we want to be wary of if, if we have too thick a cap or the size of the, the you know the particular size of the thing is too small then we can stop the oxygen from getting down into this soil and once that becomes anaerobic if it does and um, that's it like we're not running a process that benefits a wall step method system anymore we're going into denitrification and then at that point there's no point having plants in there obviously we're denitrifying but we're not relying on the the system of the wall stab method anymore
So there we go guys, it's all set up now. I've planted Ritala Indica at the back corner here. And then Ludwigia Repens in this corner. So all the back has got stems in it. These are primarily water column feeders. So they're going to pull all nutrition out of the water. Anything that's in the water column. Sorry if there's a little bit of cloudiness. There always is. I always find there is in a brand new water start tank. I've done a few water changes to try and clear it. And then I've planted right across the front. I've planted dwarf sage. sage so with the dwarf sage it's going to get its root down into the substrate. Um, and then over the next eight weeks what's going to happen is the soil is going to mineralize and it's going to break down it's already a mild soil but it's going to break down into like a uh, aquatic silt um, which will provide nutrients for the for the plants and after all this has happened then i'm going to add the fish there's no point rushing this process i don't think uh, i'm not sure what sort of fish to get yet let me know in the comment sections what you think. I'm kind of swaying towards a few white cloud mountain minnows or celestial pale danios. I haven't got my heart set on anything yet. But I'm kind of swaying towards the likes of a dwarf white cloud mountain minnows because I've never kept them before. Um, so, as I say, we've got the dwarf side gym, we've got stem plants and we've got red root floaters and salvinia at the top for the early advantage. And there's a bit of duckweed in here, so hopefully that'll coat got a couple of snails in here i'm not sure i might put a few cherry shrimp in let me know what if you think i should put a couple of cherry shrimp in here and uh, if so what color I, you remember in mind i've already got blue i've already got red i've already got yellow um and if i did put a few in i might fancy a different color i'm not sure but that's it now i'm gonna leave it let the i'm gonna let the soil mineralize and then in eight weeks, about then, let, I'm going to let the tank cycle, minimise the soil and then it's all good to go.